What's happening? This is Avedon, and welcome to another episode of Beats for Breakfast. Today, we are joined by a friend of the channel. We have interviewed him before, and it was an amazing game. We got to talk about music and even some retro gaming and just deep down into homebrew and a whole bunch of stuff. And now, as of this day today, as you're watching this, he is on his way to 500,000 subscribers. Please welcome Modern Vintage Gamer. What's going on, man? How you been? What's going on, Everdon? Man, that was probably the <laughs> nicest and best uh, introduction I've ever received. So I really appreciate it, man. But, uh, Anytime, hey, man. Thanks for, thanks for having me back on. I, I really liked our chat last time. Um, like, likewise. It, it was fun, man. So I, I'm, I'm uh, honored to be back on your show. It's great to have you on. I see that you got you still got your um gu guitars in the background. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I played them since uh, we took we talked last time. Actually, <laughs> bro, it's <laughs> listen with how much has happened from when we last talked. You know, we had a small talk before we got on on the air about just you know the different changes you know in the world and even in this in this country in itself and just working from home all the time. I get it. Yeah. It's. It could be hard to really tackle the things that you really like doing because it's it's different. Sometimes it gets it gets it's, it could be it could be really difficult. Yeah. So, but um, I wanted to just really introduce the fact like you're on your way to five hundred thousand subscribers. First, how does that feel? Um, I'm not really a numbers kind of guy. Uh, look, I don't want to play. I don't want to play it down. Right, H having almost half a million subs is a milestone right there's no there's no doubt about it and you know well and it's definitely something that i will be very happy once once i get there but i do want to say that i'm not really like a numbers guy when it comes to things like subs you know what i'm saying like um every sub that i have is obviously you know someone that that follows my channel unless of course they're, they're a bot or something hopefully i don't have too many of those but mm -hmm. really i mean it, you know it, it's just it, it's just a number at the end of the day you know and and while it's a real cool milestone to to achieve that once i get there it's going to be okay what's what's next you know like I, I don't really sit down and and kind of you know dwell on it or think about it too much i just think about okay that was cool now what's what's the next goal and you know if it's 750 or a million or whatever but um no it, it does feel great to to you know to start to approach that that milestone um i've been doing youtube you know in for i mean i've been around oh, youtube for a while but man like the years. last yeah but the last like three or four years is when i really kind of put my head down and started grinding and and seeing what what could become of all this and the response has been you know nothing but absolutely incredible so i i really appreciate everyone that that has followed my channel and, and follows me and and likes the content that i make and you know it's it's been fun and uh yeah man the ride will just continue on so yeah i mean i'm very very happy that that you know that that milestone is is fast approaching nice nice i'm curious like what caused the change and the shift because you said you've been doing youtube for quite a while now like longer than most people but from what i've yeah. seen so i would say what caused that shift if you want to go into that well i started youtube in 07 and look I didn't really get serious about it until maybe 2015, I want to say. Mm -hmm. But my channel, like, I didn't really know what my channel was for a long time. You know, like, so I, when I started, all I would do was upload Fallout 3 and Call of Duty videos, kind of like what everyone was doing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was, wasn't until about 2015 when I was watching other creators making content about retro computers and retro video game systems and i thought to myself you know i can do that i can do that better than i don't want to say everyone but i can do i can do that better than most people can you know and i think i've got a pretty good understanding and knowledge of how these things work so i'm going to i'm going to give this a go and see what where it comes comes out you know and i think anyone that starts youtube man like um doesn't think about you know monetization and and making money and stuff like that and for me it was initially it was never about making money you know for a long time actually it wasn't really about that it was me it was just about having fun you know and mm -hmm. um 
but there's a point where it, it switches from you're having fun to you know you get one video that kind of just stands out from the rest of the videos you've made you know whether it's it's your best work or it's um it's been viewed more than than the other videos have and there's something about that video that people really connected with you know and that's what you want to hone in on you know that's that's once you once you figure what that once you figure that out what that is that's when you really start to you know you should really start to kind of hone in on on what made that video so you know connect with so many people and that's mm. that's how it all kind of went for me so when i started um i look I, I just released absolute trash videos you know as as everyone does you know and and you know i was using this you know for years right i mean i didn't have a camera or anything you know because i didn't know anything about right Ca uh, cameras i didn't even know how editing worked you know like i would see these cool flashy effects and these nice pans and zooms and intros and outros and music and i didn't know dude i, I had no experience about any of that stuff all all i knew was i i could make um some kind of video on my iphone or my android phone and upload it just completely unedited right mm -hmm. um so you know slowly you kind of learn the the kind of the the craft of of content creation and and you know it, once you get um a, a solid understanding of that and a solid workflow that that works for you you kind of it's you know you kind of just you know get into that mindset of you know content creation and i think ultimately that's that's you know what i did and i had one video that you know i talked about that one video and i had that one video that at the time you know i was um in back in 15 16 i was probably getting about it you know 100 to 300 views a video and then there was this one video that that dropped that had uh, it hit like 5,000, and i was like whoa that's that's pretty big you know and um so i started to just go down the path of trying to dissect why that video did better than than the others and and ultimately that's that's kind of how you know my mvg you know the channel that you know kind of just you know started from i mean if you go back and watch all my old stuff um and i've got videos going back from the from day one a lot of the early stuff is still there but it's it's all it's not great i mean it's all pretty bad content but mm -hmm. it's just that timeline you know that you can you can see that gradual you know growth that i have not only in in numbers but also in ability and experience you know um learning learning about editing and and music and and all that stuff and and yeah, man, I mean, I think, I think, you know, I know I kind of took a little while to answer that question, but, um, I think that, I think that's ultimately, you know, um, you know, the, the, the secret of, of my success, I guess, you know, no, that's, that's yeah. fantastic. As I wanted to ask that because it's, you know, it's, it's something that you said that it's like, you found one thing that works and you just kept on doing that yeah. and it, it, it probably derived from something that you initially just like doing something you thought it was fun initially yeah. and you just capitalized on that one thing mm -hmm. you know a lot of the cases a lot of the times it's you know for myself even i'll even say for myself like back you know my my legacy content i've been doing youtube since 20 i want to say 2016 and a lot of my content has been shifting rapidly, even now, as we discussed yeah. before we gave me, we got on the air that my content was is, is still changing to this day. So I I get it and I understand it's just finding that one thing. And it's, yeah. you know, for gamers, I would say it's, I guess this, this could go segue going into, um, you know, when Joe Rogan spoke about a couple of weeks ago, a couple of weeks back with how, People misquoted him or mistook him out of context, but he was saying gaming is a waste of time. That was the quote that they took from a two hour interview, which in context, I don't I personally believe he was speaking more so to kids, even though what he was saying in context could be applicable to anybody and and really not just for gaming, but for anything. But I wanted um Kind of just your thoughts on his statements in reference into how 
at first focusing on kids, but I will even include even lump some adults in this case who game and just game and game and game. But that's all they yeah. do. I, I mean, I agree with you. I think he did take those. I mean, the, those words were set out of context. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. I, mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, there's there's obviously um, I mean, there's this look video games has made so many people's careers out there you know whether Absolutely. you're whether you're in the industry as a developer or if you're a pr person or uh, even you know if you're a youtuber that mm. that um that talks about video games or if you do live streams i mean video games connects with us so many people and in so many ways right and it also quite honestly it pays many of our bills as well so it no it, it's it, it's not a waste of time but I, I i do think that his his quotes were taken out of context you know and um you know i think it's that it's that whole you know that little kid or that that seven year or eight year old that's spending all his time playing video games not not you know reading a book or something you know those types Mm -hmm. of those types of arguments or you know what i'm saying so it's it's like the 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 you know the, the the latest iteration of back when i was growing up it was stop watching so much tv you know mm-hmm. it, it's the same type of argument you know if you watch too much tv then you're not gonna you know get an education you're not gonna you're not gonna um you know learn about about you know important stuff you know mm-hmm. so I, I just think it's the same type of you know um thing that that someone would say in 2020 versus you know stop watching so much tv and you know in, in in 1990 or something like that so i didn't really put too much stock into it um it was kind of a throwaway quote that just got picked up and went viral and a lot of people were unhappy about it but um no man i I didn't really think too much of of that what 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 did you think of it i'm curious i thought that like you said like you said his thoughts his his comments were taken out of context and i took the time to listen to everything leading up to that interview because for me person i'm i'm big on context so i Mm -hmm. wanted to see well who is he talking to first of all and when i saw like his premise content context was talking about how kids who don't have good examples and good and good examples of trying to do something more yeah. than just you know leisure time and he used he did say video games were anything that could simulate them and he even used drugs at the time and that's how people who don't have anything to gravitate towards they gravitate towards these things and statistically he has facts backing him up on that that Mm -hmm. has that has happened now is it to say that gaming is a waste of time no it's not he was saying that it's a waste of time to only do that and not to do something else that could actually grow into an actual skill right and i support i support what he says on that because he used jujitsu, which i understand he gravitate that's he, he he used to do mma like that's that's his thing so he used something that he could relate to where you cultivate a skill and you put that into a business and that business comes into something that you love doing it. You spent the last three years doing this and now you have something that you can buy a house and everything and you could live a life that you enjoy yeah. by s- spending three years cultivating this. Now, to his to his defense he did say at the end he did acknowledge gamers have been successful in everything and he even says not even just one in a million if he does acknowledge it can happen where gamers can be um you know esports players even he mm-hmm. he acknowledged that but then he also acknowledged even if you're an esports player even just even with youtube even you have to do what's trendy you can't do what's just you want to play all the time yeah. because if you're on here on the platform of YouTube, there has to be a give, there has to be a give or take. There has to be it just can't be just about you because it was just all about you. There's no point uploading the video. Mm-hmm. So that's why I did understand what he was saying. I I do agree now looking back at it. What other people say it could have been said better. It could have been directed better. But at the end of the day, his comments, I do agree. It said they can be a waste of time. And I say that even towards myself yeah. on different ends um, to be very vulnerable and put, put myself out there. My hours in Smash Brothers and Splatoon 2, 
I think to myself, what if I put that more into my music at that time? And where would I would have been? Yeah. And those are humbling questions I ask myself. So it's not the to put anyone down, but it's moderation is key. Moderation is important. Yeah, and I, I agree with you. I mean, got your Smash Brothers um, example was interesting because, you know, in one way you could you could say, well, what if I put those hours into something more constructive? But you mentioned moderation as well. But I mean, for me, it's it's you know you got to have that balance you know absolutely um i mean if you're grinding on smash brothers you know 18 hours a day i mean that's one thing but if you're if you're stepping away and playing a few hours a day that's, that's different not big, that's, not a big deal. that's not a big yeah. deal at all and i i for one i wasn't doing that like i was on the other end on the other spectrum right i was i would spend literally i'll go to work come home Turn on Smash Bros. Turn on Splatoon or or RPG that I was playing on. Log in about easy two or three hours into that. Yeah, and then I would probably work on some YouTube stuff, and music would not get touched. Right, for right. a while. So it's like that balance wasn't really there, and it's when time is time is something that we all have to consider. It's like if you're not balancing your time then your time is going to go in other places. And yeah. that's one thing I had to learn. I had to learn that I need to balance my time now. Now, do I still play Smash Brothers or do I still play other games? I do. I do still play those games, but not nearly as much. Now there's more of a focus. And that is the I'm using myself as an example of what Joe Rogan is talking about. Mm -hmm. It My time was wasted towards that because I what I'm learning now, if I spent let's just say an extra hour if i took one hour off each day last year i would have had 365 hours added to me learning something new yeah times that by two over 700 hours so it's like i look at things from that standpoint where it's like you do have the opportunity to learn and cultivate new skills and you could put hours upon hours you could put thousands of hours in the course of a few years or even one year into a new craft and then you could put yourself in a position where you're doing something that you're truly passionate about and yeah. to kind of segue for gamers i see you know a lot of gamers they you know they like playing their video games and that play time that they're they're doing and I'm just curious in your thoughts on this is like, what do you think is a way they could translate that? Because there has to be a way I'm I'm asking you because I'm, I'm curious to know. There has to be a way to translate that amount of play time mm -hmm. into either a side hustle or a full out on a, into a full on business. Oh, man. I mean, that's that's a good question. I mean, for me. It's. I don't know if I'm going to give you the best answer, but for me, Go video for game, video games is is an escape from from you know the grind. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm not, and it, it's probably the same for you. But you know, if if I'm if I'm you know spending four or five hours a night playing Ghost of Tsushima or something, oh, um, it's because I I just want to forget about work for a while. You know, so but I mean trying to motivate or transition folks into you know into doing something uh, into a hustle i mean that, that that would be that's difficult i mean you know the the easy answer is to say well just start making youtube videos but i mean you and i both know that that's not going to work right i mean <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> unless unless you're bringing something unique to the table um you know that's going to be very difficult but i will also say this um if you do want to start creating content then there's, I don't want to, you know, dissuade you from doing from doing that because I mean that's how I started. I started like I said with a crappy iPhone, right? So anyone can can make content. It's really about um, what your expectation is. I mean, if you if you're going into it thinking, you know, I want to make I want to make money in the first year, forget it. You're not going to make anything. But if you do it because it's a passion and and it's something that you're really passionate about and maybe um down the line you know um you could you could make some money from doing it then yeah i would say give it a go but i mean going into um you know trying to answer your question is tough but i mean for me um what i think about when i'm playing video games and how that may kind of go you know move into something like um 
you know, writing code or music or something is if I'm playing a game, um, like sometimes I sit down and think, man, that's, that's, that's a really good, good music piece I'm listening to right now. Or um, that's an awesome little graphical effect that they're doing. I want to learn how that works, you know. So what I would probably do for me is I jump on YouTube and see if I can, you know, find out how stuff's done. Because I love that stuff, man. Like I always want to know how things are done. You know, that's that's part of part of who I am. You know, I've, I've wanted to learn how things were done since I was a kid, you know, when I took apart a radio because I wanted to learn how that worked, right? So, you know... I would say, you know, take the time and and really try to figure out how some of these things work if you're interested in doing that. Or if, if you're playing a video game and you think to yourself, I really want to be in the video game industry, you know, maybe give some thought to where you see yourself, you know, um, are you kind of analytical and, and, you know, you have a good mathematical brain and you want to get into the engine development, like things like Unreal or Unity, for mm-hmm. example, or um, are you more into, you know, writing a story, a really good story? Um, I mean, man, there are there are video game companies out there that pay good money for, for script writers that, that can write good stories, right? So mm-hmm. um, there's also, you know, the QA testing piece where you basically you test you test stuff you test games right um the the cool part about you know um a video game is that if you do give it some thought you can apply those those techniques that you you've learned playing a video game into some form of you know um monetization whether it be looking for work or um or you know um making your own content so that's what i would say you know um I, i would say you know, if you are interested in kind of taking things further, then yeah, I mean, there's definitely some avenues there that you can you can look into. And Twitter is a really good resource for that stuff. You know, like um, there's the hashtag game dev. Um, I mean, you can ask all sorts of questions in there and um, there'll be someone that's a professional that will, will point you in the right direction about, about any type of questions that you have. So there's that aspect of it, but again, you know, for me, um, I play games to escape, man. So I, <laughs> I usually, I usually just kind of unplug. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would definitely, you know, give those those ideas some thoughts, you know. Definitely, definitely. I um, appreciate you answering that because sure. looking at you know just at this time we're in, where unfortunately there are a lot of people out of work. It's you know, my goal is to provide some type of option for, mm-hmm. you know, for people who probably do want to see, well, what can I do to get some extra cash, you know, in the house? And they feel, you know, your options are limited and you depending on what state you're in, how your mobility is limited as well. So I definitely get get what you're saying especially you know for me for video games video games for me i've came to that realization video games for me is a is a time for me to relax yeah it's a time for me it's rarely i'll hear a video game and then i'll get inspired musically it's like i'll hear <laughs> some i'm like oh okay but sometimes if i'm playing like Splatoon or a competitive game. Oh man, you gotta you gotta break out the old Neo Geo games, man. <laughs> if you want some some good music soundtracks. Oh, King King King, King of Fighters. That's that's yeah. a go that's a go to for me. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> King of Fighters is, is a go to <laughs> for me. I'm I'm a, I love I love fighting games. Like I was even telling um a few people, fighting games had some real underrated music. If you go back to oh, the old dude. Street Fighter games, oh, <laughs> thousand I, dude, I love the Street Fighter soundtrack. Like like all of them, all of them. Like literally Same from here. the first one to. <laughs> Street Fighter Five, I, I love all of them. All of them are good. Like yeah. Street, I think Street Fighter Three is probably my favorite one. Possibly which one though? Third Strike or Third Strike? Um, yeah, Third, third Strike is Third, third Strike is Third dope. Strike. Third Strike, and um, I also like Alpha. Alpha. I like the Street Fighter Alpha soundtracks. Like, yeah, <laughs> except that announcer man, he's really loud. Uh, yeah, he, he gets <laughs> annoying. The, sound, the soundtracks are good. The soundtracks are good. But um, yeah. So it's like I. You know, I definitely get it when it comes to inspiration, when it comes to that. But I understand that not everyone's myself. And I also want to be clear that I'm not pushing that gamers should monetize their craft. Yeah. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. I'm just saying for people who probably thought about the idea and thinking, how can they go into this? Yeah. There's like like you said, there's many different avenues, like how to's are great ways to break on in, especially um, 
We talk about Smash Bros. or Street Fighter. We can talk about Smash Bros. Street Fighter or fighting games in general. How to pull off certain types of combos, easiest way to pull off combos, or um, like best button configurations mm -hmm. for combos. Diff different things of that nature, or best controllers to use. There's so many different things that you can do to make yourself, you know, start to stand out a little bit as a gamer. And you you touched on just even just bringing something new to the table and i get it that mm. could be kind of tough especially if the game that you're playing isn't really a searchable game but one of the things that you can do is you could really you could be found by adding like comedic aspects to yourself i've seen some people do that adding more of your personality granted that's not the most unique in the case but if you do it with certain video games that no one is really playing but it's yeah. the way you do it well it could yeah. blow up like for for me even though he was a larger youtuber i never heard of markiplier and so i never heard of five nights of freddy's until i saw markiplier's reactions right and yeah. his reactions to that game they were comedic they were extremely they were extremely funny granted this was at a time before reactions were really on the rise like that so you can kind of say what he was doing at the time for its time was unique but it's like throwing ideas out like that it's really just making sure you're having fun and at the end of the day you're respecting the viewer yeah. so i wanted to ask you though um and you kind of did actually you kind of did say it's like you touched this a lot but has there been, been anything else, else that you could just pinpoint that really helped you the most on your YouTube journey? Um, consistency, obviously, is a big thing for me. Like, I, I treat it as work, you know, like, th this is this is work for me. You know, like, every week, it's, it's the same routine. Um, you know, like, I have a set schedule of how I go about doing things. Mm -hmm. And I, I stick to it, you know, and, and I think that's that's very helpful, you know, and I think if you talk to any creator that that, you know, has, I'll say more than, you know, 10,000 subscribers um, that releases weekly content, then they would have a probably a similar type of schedule, you know, and uh, so for me, I, I that's what I do. Um, and, you know, I, I release a video a week, you know, and some folks release a video every single day, right? So... For me, it goes back to that balance that that I I really want in you know in my life, and that is, YouTube is not the only thing that I do, right? So um, I also uh, work in game de in game development as well. So I have other mm -hmm. other things that I do. So I balance um, YouTube with you know with with other stuff that I do as well. So um, that's that's very important for me to do that. But other than that, man, like um, I would say, you know the number one thing i would tell anyone is make sure your audio is on point because if your audio sucks then people are going to turn your video off dude so many times i have turned a video on and i watch all sorts of content you know i'll watch i'll watch the small 100 sub person um all the way to you know the big 10 plus million you know uh youtubers out there mm -hmm. and um if your audio isn't good I'm not, I can't, I, I'm going to have to turn your video off because I can't deal with bad audio. Right. So um, what I what I tell anyone is just invest $20 and get a, a lapel microphone that connects to your uh, your phone. You can probably get them cheaper than that actually. And that will be, uh, that's that's good enough to get good sounding audio. I used a, um, a, a $20 lapel microphone for uh, for five years. In fact, most of the videos you watch on my channel is that microphone. You, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get, to look good and sound good on, on you know, content creation on YouTube. And, um, and, you know, I, look, there's probably a channel out there that, you know, that preaches that stuff, but I would say that's, that's something that a lot of people need, need you know, would, would really seek some good information on because uh, I certainly didn't know, you know, when I was going through the paces, uh, I, I bought, you know, I bought a microphone and a mixer and all this stuff. And then I realized I didn't sound any better and I didn't look any better. And I'm like, well, now I've got to figure out how to use this stuff, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's always that learning, you know, that learning curve that's involved. But um, 
yeah for me man consistency i i would say is number one um backed up by you know spend a little bit of money getting some um some decent sounding audio you know i think i think they're, they're the big two things for me nice nice uh i could definitely attest to uh the change um i had for my first earlier videos um my webcam was the webcam on an hp laptop <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if anyone who knows those, those are <laughs> grainy. No matter, no yeah. matter how good. Now, good lighting. I would say another thing: if you want for a decent picture, you can get good lighting for under fifty bucks. Oh yeah, under, under fifty bucks. My webcam, fifty bucks right now. It's like you're gonna sp you, you may spend a little bit to get your stuff out there, but roughly you could spend under two hundred dollars. Yeah, to get something, and for the gamers that are watching, that's less expensive than a console these days. It's like literally the for the price of two games, you could literally get a whole the whole set that you need. Mm -hmm. And I would say you're right, like having a good sound system and consistency. Consistency does help because it's I can attest um, from 2018 when I was uploading two three times a week. Whether it's reactions, whether it was news uh, responses, two to three times a week, or if I wasn't uploading, I was live streaming. You saw yeah. me at least two or three times a week, mm -hmm. each and every time. You get over 1,000 subscribers, literally. I, it, I got over to 1K in less than a year. Mm -hmm. So That's fast. <laughs> That's it, fast. It is. Yeah. And it's like, you know, people who shout you out, it's like networking is important. There's, a, there's many things that go into that. But um, what I'm learning, and this is just something that I'm pick, picking up now, where I've been at a standstill at 1.8K for a while, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. But the one takeaway that I will say is knowing what you want to do consistently. Yeah, I've had ideas on the channel that one of them I may continue again, but I have ideas on the channel where if I stayed consistently doing them, my channel would probably would have been bigger. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, uh, un I wanted to really highlight what you're saying. Consistency is so important. Yeah. And that's why this goes back into what you were saying before, having a passion for what you want to do, because there's times I burnt out. There was times I just said, you know, I really don't want to do this. Yeah. And it made me really question. And when I started doing music again, it wasn't that I burnt out with music. It was just more so, what can I do differently? How can I add value? And I think that's the biggest thing about being a YouTuber that needs to be hammered in. How can I add value to this community? Yeah, and I think the other thing just to add to that is, don't be afraid to take risks. Like, Absolutely. Take a chance, you know. There was, there was a, a specific moment in my YouTube career where everything changed for me. And mm -hmm. it wasn't that 5,000 view video. It was, it was, I think it was about 18 months after that where um, I was probably sitting at about, I wanna say about 7,000 subscribers. Um, and I was making this video about the original Xbox, right? And mm -hmm. um, I remember um, I really wanted to make this video on the original Xbox because it's one of my favorite consoles. Mm -hmm. I grew up with it. Um, I got into the homebrew scene and no one had really made videos on the original Xbox in that way before. Um, and it was, you know, the, the, the videos that were out there already were just talking about the games and stuff, you know, which, which is fine. But I wanted to talk about how awesome it was from, you know, a homebrew standpoint where you could load it up full of ROMs and emulators and put it in your living room and play and, and really just reminisce, you know, the amazing days that they were. And dude, I remember making this video I've done, and I swear to God, so many times I thought to myself, this video is stupid. You, you got to stop doing this. Just don't make this video. No, no one cares about, no one cares about this content you're about to make. You, you're the only person that know, you know, that, that cares about this stuff don't don't release it and i dude i remember i made the video and i was sitting sitting there in the you know in the admin screen ready to put you know set it to public and i was like i didn't want to do it like i was i was petrified like 
I just felt like the backlash, you know, like I had seven seven K subs and I felt like I was gonna lose all my subs, you know. Mm -hmm. And and, that, that, and I'm not I'm not I'm not kidding, man. I like I had this like fear that this video was just gonna just tank my career because before before that, um the, the the content i was making was a little different right mm -hmm. um before that i was talking about retro computers so this was kind of this xbox video which was in the game console kind of space and over here you know my kind of bread and butter content at the time was you know was about um old computers from the 80s and 90s so i kind of felt like i'm gonna lose my audience you know mm -hmm. but i remember releasing the video and look the thing absolutely killed it it that was the turning point for me you know it nice. started the, the video started slow right mm -hmm. but um man it got like over a million million views on it and i was like what is going on you know like i i had no idea what was happening like because this was the first time that you know i'd experienced i don't want to say viral it it wasn't it wasn't a viral video in the sense that it got so many views so quickly but it was an evergreen video that just continued and continued and continued to get views on it. And um, after about four weeks, it was already at like, you know, half a million. After, um, you know, three months, it was at a million. And after, you know, a year, it was like a million and a half. I mean, this thing just kept going. And mm. dude, I remember thinking to myself, I'm never ever going to question whether I think I should release something, you know, just, just do it, you know, do not, don't be afraid to, to take a chance, you know. Don't be afraid to mix up um, your current, you know, your, your, the stuff that you, you currently do and introduce something else in because that's how you grow your fan base, you know. Absolutely. Like you've got your loyal fans, you know, your loyal audience, and they're going to, look, they're going to stick with you no matter what unless mm -hmm. you do something completely horrible and, you know, we don't want to talk about that. But they're going to be with you no matter what, right, because they're, they're, the they're the people that have been there with you since day one. So trying to get more people to follow you is is really the, the key thing. And if you watch my content, um, it's very subtle, but I sometimes I try some new things and I bring in a, a new audience in. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And I've always thought about that that one video that I made where I, you know, I was literally just thinking this is a waste of time. But yeah, I, I would definitely tell anyone out there just take a take a chance you know if if you're not sure you know just if but if it feels good like for, from a from a personal perspective if it feels good to you then just go for it you know it's absolutely what, the worst that can happen is no one's going to watch it you know and um if you stand by the content that you make and it's a good video mm -hmm. then that's that's really all that matters you know like on the flip side i've made videos that i have felt were some of my best work that hardly got any views on there. I know, you know? that feeling so well. <laughs> but I still feel great about it, man. Because like, yes. I, I, I watch them and I'm like, man, I, that was a pretty good video. I, I'm pretty happy. You know, I'm pretty proud of myself for that one. So either way, I, you know, I, I kind of walk away feeling feeling good about it. And so, you know, if you put the work in, um, there's really, you know, there's really nothing else to say. It's, it's you know, you're either going to get some success from it you may not get some success from it but you'll still make a good video and you know it's something that uh, you know you can be proud of you know absolutely well i would like to thank you for taking the time to come on this was in a, a great this was a great discussion um i do have to ask though because i know you you babe you talked and uh, joked off the air you said you haven't touched the guitars yet <laughs> <laughs> i haven't <laughs> i was gonna i was gonna say do I said, when you get a chance, um, is there um, any music plans in the future? Oh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting the urge again to uh, to produce. Um, I'm getting, uh, yeah, in fact, in fact, um, I'll tell you, I, I'm making a video right now. In fact, let, let me back up a little bit. So the last time we, you and I talked, we, we talked about music on the yes. Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance, right? Mm -hmm. So... On the DS, um, there's the Korg synthesizer um, cartridge. Yes. So I yes. bought that, and I was messing around with um, some sequencing on it, and I was like, "Man, this is this is kind of cool." So um, I'm making a video on the uh, the Nintendo synth apps that you can get. You can get um, the Korg app for the DS. There's one for the 3DS, 
and the Switch just brought one out as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm kind of dabbling with that stuff at the moment. So, um, getting the urge to do some uh, some music stuff for sure. Question: the One of the the cork for the Switch. That's the one that can that can connect to your um your Apple computer too. And yeah. So- yeah okay i I thought it was that and i don't have an apple computer Um, neither do i (laughs) but uh the the one that i i messed around with the most was the ds one because i heard these stories that um you know these djs would 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 bring their ds you know uh, on stage with them and plug it in into the pa and i was like that can't be right and then i when i kind of read about this stuff and when i looked at some of the music that that can come out of this thing um, and what w- the, the normal setup is to get two D- DSs because there's a way to sync them between each other and essentially double the number of tracks and double the number of instruments. Um, I mean, this, this stuff's incredible, man. So uh, I've been, been looking at that and um, it's been, it's been a fun, fun ride so far. So, yeah. Nice. Nice. I'm, I'm excited for you, man. I can't wait to see that video when it comes out. Excuse me. So, um, I have to say, like, this is a great follow up interview. Great to have you on. Um, excited to see you to hit. Um, congratulations early on 500 on 500 K and even more, even more to go. And it's and I want to say congrats on 500 K because it's like, as you said, this isn't just a number to so imagine that's that that's people. So many people subscribe to your content. Yeah. It's phenomenal. And definitely um next year you're gonna be at uh long island retro hopefully dude I, I hope so i hope everything goes back to normal dude i miss conventions this year so bad I like i do. i really really wish you know that could happen unfortunately um you know it's, it wasn't to be but hey um I'll, I'll at least hit like two or three conventions next year and long, long island is definitely one of them for sure i'm gonna definitely be at long island next year definitely like lord when everything's okay i'm gonna make sure i get over there because it was cool and i want to hopefully there'll be more people that could that'd be willing to go but uh, way, dude i, I think so like you know um conventions there was a couple last year that kind of closed down or they didn't do as well mm-hmm. you know some of the smaller ones um because i guess there was a little bit of saturation oversaturation with those events because there was man there was so many of them um i mean in in depending on where you are in the country i mean you'll only get you'll get one but if you look at the calendar of those events i mean there was probably about 25 to 30 of them over the summer you know like every weekend there was there was a new one in some in some part of the country which is really cool but i think a lot of the um you know a lot of the promoters and the event organizers kind of felt a little well you know they were losing some money out of those uh, sales because you know if your if your small event is right next to a big one that's the following week or the previous week mm-hmm. a lot of people aren't going to turn up they're just going to go they're going to fly or they're going to drive and and it's go to like the big one E3, right that's yeah, exactly like E3 was like e3 and uh too many games uh, yeah in, in philadelphia so i get it yeah, so I think next year, you know, now that there's been no E3, obviously, and no conventions, I think, man, there's going to be, like, a f- just a massive group of people go into these shows. So I think it's going to give it a, a, a bit of a, sh- you know, boost and a shot in the arm, you know. Nice. Well, um, to respect your time, because I thank you for being on. Um, definitely would I'd love to have you on ever again. You're always welcome on. Same even goes for the chill cast even always welcome always honored to have you on yeah i'll have to i'll have to jump on it um <laughs> one uh is it friday nights right is friday it, yeah. nights 10, yeah, 10 p.m uh, uh, i appreciate the invite man I'll, I'll definitely uh make my way there one one friday night that'll be fun cool any uh parting words for anyone watching just uh thanks for having me back on again abaddon it's it's awesome to uh to talk with you and um yeah man um till till next time but uh just uh for those people um that don't know who i am just subscribe and and yes, follow please. me on twitter and all that stuff but otherwise thanks for having me on uh his information will be down below make sure you are subscribed to mvg we want to thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this video hit this like button hit that subscribe button and most of all most of all you make sure you share this with a friend this is avadon and mvg and we are out take care y'all